Welcome to Lynn County, Kansas. And I'm going to take a tour trying to find as many ghost towns, unincorporated communities as I can in the county. Uh, we're starting today in Prescott. It's, a, it's not a ghost town, uh, but it does have a couple cool historical places. And I'm gonna, there, there are a few of these towns in Lynn County that aren't ghost towns. I'll just drive right through those and maybe, maybe give you a little peek at the downtown area, but we're gonna focus on the the small communities and the ones that aren't there that still have some history to be told. Lynn County was a county that was larger and has gotten smaller over time. It's not one of the smallest uh, counties in Kansas, but definitely population has gone down for many reasons. It's, it's pretty much a rural area. Uh, but there's a lot of history with the bleeding Kansas uh, historical uh, places to check out. So once again, we'll just kind of take a get out the map look for every small little dot we can in the county and uh, Go check out Lynn County Uh, Kansas, kind of our first stop with a really cool uh, school, an old business building. A couple of things to see here. Uh, post office lasted for about a decade, late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, it was always a small community, uh, but it is kind of a cool place to start our day. So we just drove through Mound City and now we're just about a mile or so north, a little bit north and west of the main part of Mound City. And this is where the town of Monica or Monica, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, would have been real close to here. This is Sugar Creek and uh, they, they kind of located on, on that creek. They had a mill there in the 1850s, right at the same time as Mound City, which was at that time Sugar Mound, was growing. They were building a town here, so you could probably say a little competition between the two. And but but after a few years and and uh, having some several businesses here, they ended up moving over to Mound City. Probably didn't make sense to have them so close to each other. And Monica just lost out on business of Mound City. So uh, very beautiful right here on the creek. I'm on a bridge. This bridge was not here at that time when it was a town. This was built in 1913. Um, but kind of cool to see some of these old bridges. Maybe we'll look for some more old bridges in Lynn County as we go. Thousands and thousands of uh, both Union and Confederate soldiers were here. Actually, the Union soldiers were over here. The Confederate soldiers were over there. And here at the historical site, they kind of tell the story of that. The inside is closed, but they have a lot of places you can walk. You can actually walk down to uh, kind of the main area where most of the 
battling battling happened um, about a mile away from here. Talking to somebody in another town and they were telling me about this and they were saying so many Confederates died down there uh, by the creek that they were just buried there. Like they just uh, put them in the ground right there. And so if you walk down there, you're gonna be amongst that um, under the ground, which is interesting thought. Um, but yeah, it was, it was the largest battle in Kansas, is one of the largest um, in this part of the, the country during the Civil War. And it was a pretty, it was a fairly quick battle. It was over um, quick and the Confederates took huge losses. The, the, Union, the Union did have some losses, but not near what the Confederate, Confederates had. And it was certainly one of the uh, major turning points in the Civil War. Right here on this railroad stop here, uh, this is what on the map it says Miami. It, it's actually been named three different things. But there's nothing here anymore, a couple houses, and uh, all, I, all, the, all I have found is there's about you know 20 or 30 people lived here at the most, so it never really grew that much. Just kind of driving along and saw a battlefield cemetery established 1873 i don't know anything about this cemetery we're not too far from where the uh, battle of mine creek was fought um, so maybe this has something to do with that or maybe they just named the cemetery that because it was so close in proximity since it was you know almost a decade later before this was established after uh, the civil war so interesting definitely way back uh, definitely back on the back roads. Behind me, this is Mine Creek, and we are in the vicinity of where the extinct ghost town Potosi was. And I'm not actually sure where it was, but I know it was on Mine Creek and it's somewhere about two miles east of Pleasanton and that's pretty much where we are. So it could have been anywhere right around here. It's not on any maps anymore, um, but it was, a, it was a small town. It actually was started as the name, uh, it was Hillsboro and it was started by pro-slavery uh, men in the mid 1850s. And then it was taken over. Uh, it was by uh, free state, uh, free state people here, and then uh, they changed the name to Potosi. And uh, it was a small, small town. And they had a sawmill on the creek, and they had a store and a post office until 1869. And then when Pleasanton, uh, which is today, you know, for this county, pretty large. Uh, when it was established and the railroad went through Pleasanton, everybody left Potosi there. And like I said, 1869 was the end of uh, the town. And, and then eventually everybody moved away and there's nothing here but just kind of open range. off right there because it dead ends behind through that bridge just a little bit so nice little walk about half a mile get out stretch the legs check out a bridge it's 110 years old as I was walking back I got back to my car there was a, a guy waiting for me and he actually because it's the uh, uh, wildlife you know area he was he saw a car parked there and he was just wondering what was going on but um, told him what I was doing he said 
that's awesome and then gave me a little heads up on a little uh, cemetery here just not too far down the road so let's check out the cemetery I drove down that road right there comes to a dead end and to a really small little interesting cemetery Pretty interesting, looks like just a little family cemetery. All the, you know, uh, headstones say the late 1800s. The guy I talked to said that, you know, this used to be, it was kind of all owned, you know, kind of homesteaders. And then um, the, the state has taken it over to make a wildlife refuge out of it. So now there's really nothing out here except wildlife. And, um, but it, you'll find a little cool cemetery. This next town that I'd be going to our next place, on this on my list of places will be Trading Post Kansas. I actually already released a video if you haven't seen it about Trading Post so make sure you watch that if you're interested in this area. Uh, sorry if it's loud we're definitely down some heavy gravel roads but so Trading Post would be the next one here and then heading on down to the next one. It was called Hensley's Point in 1869 when it was started and then it was called Barnard at one point, and then it was Cobb uh, as well, and then eventually became Wakor. This is where the, um, I guess you'd say the the worst pre-Civil War, um, you know, violence happened in the Kansas-Missouri border war area right here on the Mara Dezine River. Um, this is a state historic site now. Basically a bunch of pro-slavery uh, people from Missouri came over here and captured uh, some Kansas free state men and then massacred several of them um one got away and and so it was you know obviously a bad situation because it wasn't like in the midst of a fight they just came over and got him and <clears throat> took him back and and murdered him and so john brown the great um abolitionist he came here a couple weeks later and you know kind of vowed vengeance on them as he headed into missouri uh, this building behind me was built by one of John Brown's followers and uh, in the, something like in the late 1850s. A lot of history in this part of Kansas that I was not aware of and uh, kind of interesting to, to explore and find it. Right over there, kind of where all that... that uh, smoke is heading out was the town of Orchard. It was a small town. Um, obviously everything looked a lot different back then and originally it was named Coonsville. And they changed it to Orchard. Don't, don't know exactly why they did that um, but uh, yeah it was Orchard and then had a population of about 30 and and when the uh, post office um, closed in the early 1900s the, the town kind of you know evaporated with it as well so nothing left that would signify there was a town there um, but it's certainly an um, important place here in Lynn County with the uh, energy plant here.
Our last stop of the day, because it's getting dark, is going to be Brooklyn. And this is the Brooklyn Cemetery. It's spelled with a Y. The original town was spelled with an I. And it was uh, Brooks. There was a man named Brooks who started the town. And it's Lynn, Lynn Valley, Lynn County here. So it's Brooklyn. And, uh, and so they started a, a small town. This was a pro-slavery town. It was 1855. And um, so they started a town. You know, back then, this was before the Civil War. And John Brown is very well known around here. And he had caused the, uh, or, or committed the Potawatomi Massacre. And so, you know, him and other uh, people that were free state, people were basically, you know, tr trying to drive out pro-slavery people. They were, you know, killing people. And um, so it was a very violent time. And so people in this area were scared of that. And they, you know, left the town. And so the town didn't you know wasn't <clears throat> very big and some of the people that like said left um when when there were rumors that there were that these men were kind of coming through causing havoc and maybe gonna come through and murder people who were pro-slavery um the mr brooks who started the town took up his goods and he headed to missouri and <clears throat> turned out those rumors were false and they didn't come th through here so he returned and and uh, others returned and they had a small community for a while but it didn't last too long about 1871 the post office closed and most of the people moved to uh, nearby towns some of them moved to Lazine which is a few miles from here and some of them moved to uh, Boacor that we had seen earlier today and uh, Brooklyn became no more but the cemetery here you know there's a combination of of older uh, older Obviously, there's still people in the area, and, and this is the local cemetery for Brooklyn. The eastern half of Lynn County. Uh, our next video, we're going to head a little bit to the western part of the county. So, hope you enjoyed that. There, was, there were some ghost towns. Um, not a not a lot of them, but we just saw a lot of cemeteries. Kansas Missouri border war was some serious stuff in this area, and uh, definitely.